Sure. Um, there are serious economic um, implications um, when it comes to this decision by the Biden administration. Um, in Ethiopia alone, over 100,000 jobs um, have been created in the textile sector. Um, and in Mali and in Guinea, um, countless jobs will be lost as a result of the removal of those countries from AGOA. Uh, but the reality is that um, I think um, when countries sign on um, to become beneficiaries of AGOA, um, the terms are clearly stipulated that in order to maintain um, a status, you must comply with certain international laws around human rights and obviously the rule of law and political stability. And here, unfortunately, because of the lack of, the administration had to take this, this position. Uh, while I think it is incredibly um, uh, difficult uh, for African countries you know, to maintain their, their economic systems, um, I really do hope that the, pre the, the Biden administration would have thought uh, this through, because what is happening here is that um, by taking this position, it is clearly making China and Russia um, to have to, to to diversify their footprint across the African continent. And but, if but the again, uh, Joanna, how different would this be in the different countries? Because we know Ethiopia is going through its own political uh, conflict. There's an ongoing war there. In the case of Mali and. Uh, uh, in the case of Guinea, there have been uh, coups, and now the military leaders are taking, you know, the positions there. I mean, what kind of pressure would the president have, you know, added to this country so they can uh, actually respect uh, the agreements of AGOA, including human rights? Look at Mali. It has also, uh, it's reeling from insurgency from the, the Islamists over there. Yeah, I think it's the clear message from Washington that um, Washington will not tolerate um, human rights abuses across the African continent. Uh, but I think at the same token, um, individualized sanctions targeting uh, perpetrators of human rights violations would have been the better route to go. Uh, because now you're going to have a number of folks in those countries who would not be employed. Um, so these factories and these companies will have to look at other countries on the African continent to engage in business. Um, so, so while I, I think that there needs to be um, respect for the rule of law in Guinea, Mali, and obviously Ethiopia and other countries, but at the same token, we have to think about the greater economic impact on the country as a whole when it comes to these types of decisions by Washington, D.C. What would you rather see than uh, if looking at the umbrella situation of the three countries in a nutshell that would really work to put pressure on these leaders to respect human rights? Well, what I would have preferred to see is um, targeted sanctions against the actual perpetrators of human rights, right, in those countries. Uh, because here, it's the people. It's the ordinary citizens. Um, for goodness sakes, you have people working in a factory. They're already not making a whole lot of money. And now those jobs will, will be gone because if those companies cannot get, cannot um, cannot maintain um, the, 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 the tax benefits and also the duty-free benefits, they're not going to stay in those countries. They will leave, and rightfully so, uh, 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 mm -hmm. and, and so on. But I think that targeting individuals who are responsible for these various human rights violations right. is the better way to go versus the country as a whole. Right. Joanna, thanks for your insight. Joanna LeBlanc is a foreign policy and national security expert who joined us live via Skype from here in Washington.